So this video was inspired by comments on my recent video, Hollywood does not understand or respect its audience, in which I stated my belief that Hollywood and Disney in particular's obsession with cramming as many female heroes into leading roles was not largely appreciated by the majority male audience who generally prefer to see male heroes. I didn't approach the topic with much tact or nuance or really go into much detail at all. So that's what I'm here to do today because this topic deserves a much more level-headed approach than what I offered in that video. First, let's get one thing out of the way. The main problem plaguing the MCU and so much of modern Hollywood is just bad writing. I'm the spy. What? Characters are bland and paint by numbers with horribly shallow arcs. Plots require convenience after contrivance to move forward at all. World building is generally just cast aside and things kind of happen for no apparent reason. And there's this over-reliance on CGI that is absolutely stifling any actual creativity. If you want references, I would suggest you see Ant-Man 3 for all of those points. So yeah, as several comments on that video and my own prior video have pointed out, the primary reason that these female protagonists have failed to win the hearts of audience on a large scale is that they just aren't written with the same care and attention that was given to their predecessors. However, let's state a couple of obvious facts. There are a larger than usual number of female leads in male dominated franchises, and those franchises are struggling. Star Wars hasn't had a movie come out since 2019, and its Disney Plus shows, with the exception of Andor, have been mediocre at best. The MCU is producing cinematic flop after flop with the rare exception, and its Disney Plus shows aren't faring any better. Indiana Jones tried for a last hurrah for Indy and a move to a new hero, and completely bombed. Obviously, correlation does not equal causation, and there are many, many factors at play other than the gender of the protagonist. But does it play a role? Well, yeah, of course it does. Do audiences largely just want characters who are well-written? Sure. But I have seen far too many comments saying how they just don't like strong women in movies to discount the fact that that sentiment does in fact exist. Now, that doesn't mean that Hollywood should act according to those voices. You can't please everyone, it's impossible, and you definitely should avoid trying to do so. If I may conjecture, I would guess that there are far more women who want to see female heroes than there are men who just don't want to see them at all. So logic would dictate that yes, you should bring in female leads even for your largely male-dominated franchise because you're going to bring in far more viewers than you might possibly lose. That is, if you actually maintain a somewhat decent quality of writing. Are strong female leads a good thing, all else being equal? Yeah, absolutely. Having women who display bravery, perseverance, and self-sacrificial love on screen is unequivocally a good thing. But, you know, they actually have to be self-sacrificing and not self-actualizing. Not that you can't have a character achieve self-actualization and still have a good arc, it's just much harder to pull off. But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Getting back to the topic at hand, is there such a thing as too many female heroes? I think it's fairly obvious that Hollywood and Disney in particular is highly focused on getting women into as many leading roles as possible, but have they overdone it? Are audiences sick of all the estrogen in their traditionally testosterone dominated arenas? And if they are, is that a legitimate complaint or should they just adjust their thinking? Starting with the last question first, as long as you're not being a loudmouth asshole about it, Nobody really should care what you do or don't want to watch. If you just don't want to see women in spandex fighting monsters from outer space, I don't really care. If you still like the superhero genre as a whole, then I think that's kind of silly, but really at the end of the day, people are free to like what they like and not care about what they just can't be bothered with. But again, you don't have to worry about the minority of viewers that are hyper-focused on only male leads if you just treat the female heroes with the same care and attention that were given to the earlier heroes in the franchise. And that's where the issue really lies in modern Hollywood, a lack of actual care about storytelling. The increasing number of female leads and co-leads, Wasp, Stature, Shuri's Black Panther, Ironheart, Sylvie, Kate Bishop, She-Hulk, Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, Monica Rambeau, is not a negative thing in its own right, but is more a symptom of Disney prioritizing diversity over developing meaningful stories and characters. That doesn't necessarily mean that none of these characters are well-written or well-received. I quite like some of them, and some I just don't really know yet. Heck, I think Ms. Marvel was a reasonably okay show. The problem was that nobody asked for it, 
and very few people knew who Kamala Khan was, and even if this wasn't the intention, it gave off the appearance of box checking. And that's the tragedy of having a female lead right now. You are far more likely to get accused of box checking, even if that wasn't remotely your intention. Diversity in stories is a very good thing, especially in tales set in our world, which is realistically quite diverse. We as consumers do want heroes and protagonists to whom we can closely relate. Remember that point later. It's important. And so, yeah, it's good, when it makes sense for the story's world, to include men and women of various ethnicities. Every cast of characters need not look like Band of Brothers for me to enjoy it, even though that cast is absolutely perfect in its own right. However, when diversity becomes the main priority, other aspects of storytelling and creativity can suffer. Did audiences care that Ariel was black now? Of course some did. Plenty of people made a huge stink about that. But personally, and I can only really speak for myself, I didn't really care what skin color the sea dweller with fins for legs had. I was just annoyed that Disney has apparently given up on trying to tell new stories at all, and is instead simply happy to continue milking their existing IPs. Similarly, do audiences really care that Iron Man was replaced by someone of different gender and race? Or are they going to reject Riri Williams because she simply lacks the depth of character that Tony Stark had? Since, you know, she got shoehorned into a movie that wasn't actually hers and was given no time to develop. The answer obviously isn't going to be the same for everyone. Some people are going to see her and just go, female Iron Man? Nah, that's not for me, dog. Is that most of the audience? I like to think not, but... Who knows? Would they be more accepting of Ironheart if this were the first time that a male hero had been replaced with a female one? I would guess so. I would think that the attitude would be more like, hmm, let's see how this plays out, instead of, oh, of course they did. I don't know. Is that at all how you feel? Let me know. I don't want to extrapolate my experience to everyone else's. But getting back to the crux of the issue, is there such a thing as too many female heroes? The answer, of course, is yes. If all the heroes in all the franchises were women, that would be too many. Obviously, that's not where we are at, and I would similarly propose that if you had all the heroes be men, that would also be bad. So there's a balance to be struck. What's the ratio then? 50-50? 80% dudes? 20% chicks? One guy in spandex for every two women in tights? Those are all stupid questions. The obsession with ratios is idiotic. There is no right answer to those questions because those are simply the wrong questions. The right question, or at least one of them, is do we have a cast of characters that will reach as many people as possible, that will win their hearts through their development and their arcs, that will keep audiences wanting to come back for more? And I think that's true from both a business and a storytelling perspective. And the key word in that question is possible. You have to admit to yourself, if you are a Hollywood exec, that whatever story you are creating simply cannot reach everyone. It just can't. There have been, are, and always will be people who simply are not interested in whatever you're putting out. Some people just don't like superhero movies, or Star Wars, or video game adaptations, or whatever. So I guess a more accurate question would be, who is our potential audience and how can we craft a cast of characters to reach all of them? Understanding that your potential viewership is significantly less than the population of the Earth. And when you are creating stories in the superhero, fantasy, and sci-fi genres, understand that your audience is going to be comprised of mostly dudes. Not all dudes, not even a vast majority, but still a lot of guys who tend to like typical guy things. Also, and this is important, the female portion of your audience already enjoys this male-dominated space. While I'm sure they enjoy the female heroes and protagonists, I can't imagine that there are really any genuine fans out there who are crying out for a 50-50 ratio. Again, fans just generally want good storytelling and characters with meaningful arcs. But there is more to it than that, because yeah, as my other video stated, guys do tend to lean more towards stories about other men. That's not an absolute statement, and it's obviously not going to apply to everyone. But all other things being equal, if you presented a thousand guys with a chance to watch a superhero movie about a dude and a superhero movie about a woman, what do you think would happen? 
I don't know, maybe the dudes will flock to see the woman because she's hot. Who knows? Remember when I said that we want to see characters to whom we can relate? How bad is your memory? That was like four minutes ago. Well, obviously this is something Hollywood knows about audiences, hence the attempts to diversify every possible movie and franchise. They want people to feel represented and thus willing to give them money. And while we can obviously be inspired by and learn from people who do not look like us or share our gender, we are naturally drawn to people, real or fictional, who are similar to us. Why do you think the Barbie movie did well? Well, for one thing, it was incredibly acted and flawless in its visual design, but more importantly because it spoke to the female experience. My wife, who could hardly be more politically different than Greta Gerwig, largely enjoyed the film because there were several parts that she strongly related to, such as the urge to seek comfort by eating a tub of ice cream and binging the six hour Pride and Prejudice. Honestly, whatever you think of that movie, you would do well to recognize the lesson that it should teach Hollywood. You don't need to rely on existing male dominated franchises to make money off of female leads. Just be creative, think about what women actually might want to watch and then Oh, I don't know, take a risk? Again, that's not to say something dumb like there shouldn't be women in the MCU, but rather that Disney saw this huge money-making machine, saw that there wasn't a fair distribution of roles gender-wise, and then tried to remedy that. Probably thinking that they would bring in lots more female viewership and keep most, if not all, of the male viewers along the way. And while the influx of female leads and the downfall of the MCU are strongly correlated, I would think that the causal nature is relatively small, but perhaps not entirely negligible. I don't know. I've thought about this a lot and I, I can't come up with like a perfect flawless answer as to why I prefer male heroes. I definitely do, and I think that's a fairly common sentiment, but obviously not universal. Perhaps it's not so much that we can relate to these incredible characters such as Aragorn, Luke Skywalker, Steve Rogers, or Kratos from the God of War games, though I do have Kratos' hairstyle. I'm working on the beard, okay? But it's that this is what men aspire to. It's a reminder of what masculinity can be if properly shaped and cultivated. Women, do you watch Theoden charge into battle and think, I'd follow him to war any day of the week? Because I do. I mean, his niece literally does that, so I would absolutely believe if you feel that way too. I guess that the idea of doing these great deeds for the sake of others has traditionally been a more masculine ideal. Obviously, there are plenty of examples for the opposite sex. Joan of Arc saved pretty much the entire country of France. But men are naturally more suited for battle because they are more aggressive, and seeing that aggression channeled through virtuous pathways is inspiring in a way that is far more unique to the male experience. I think men need examples like that. Today, more than ever. I mean, young men today are just kinda lost. They're like Atreus from God of War, feeling like they're incapable of anything, but then when someone breaks that line of thinking, they lose themselves in their anger and misdirect the power that they have thanks to just being who they naturally are. I'm going to make my video about that game, I promise. Eventually. We as men need heroes who show us how to acknowledge our weaknesses, vices, bad tendencies, and failings, how to not let them define us, and how to direct our passionate energy, even our anger, toward living for others. Those heroes don't have to be fictional. There are countless figures throughout history and hopefully in our own lives who are truly heroic. But you also have to meet people where they are. And where young men and women tend to be is in front of a screen, large or small. Should we derive all the inspiration we need from the real lives of people who have come before us? I mean, maybe, but even then, someone would need to tell their stories. The tales of Aragorn and Frodo, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo, Captain America and Iron Man, and so many others are quite obviously fictional, but they are also incredibly real, in the sense that they are derived from the experience and minds of their creators. Sam Gamgee, for example, wasn't conjured out of thin air. He's based off of a soldier J.R.R. Tolkien knew during World War I. Stories are supposed to be inspirational, educational, cautionary, perhaps all three at the same time. And sometimes the best way to achieve those goals is to simply tell a story that no one has ever told before. Which brings me back to the matter at hand, the gender swapping or gender equalizing that is rampant in the MCU. Putting aside the obvious main issue of just bad character writing, I think Disney's next biggest mistake was replacing old heroes with new ones who are strikingly similar or even identical to them in terms of technology, skill, or powers. 
I mean, the random FBI guy even shouts, oh, shit, she got as if to ensure that we make that connection in our minds. There absolutely is, however, a good way for a hero to pass the torch to a replacement, even if the gender is swapped. Logan handled this terrifically, even though I doubt we'll ever see an X-23 movie. And for all its silliness, I still rather enjoyed Hawkeye, mostly because Clint Barton actually took part in making room for Kate Bishop by playing a role in her development. So it's very much doable, and audiences can accept it, but you actually have to work for it. Dropping the replacement out of the sky is just asking for trouble. Would the successor heroes be better received if, all else being equal, they were men? That's a great question. I don't know. Maybe it's certainly possible that they would be, again, especially considering how many comments I've gotten about just not liking strong women. And that's not my opinion. I'm just the messenger. But of course, the MCU and other such franchises do not command an entirely male audience. So maybe, all else being equal, it is beneficial to bring in more female heroes. It's silly to try to achieve an equal ratio for equity's sake, and they're not doing themselves any favors by absolutely phoning it in when it comes to writing lately. But I do know that men need male heroes. Not every hero needs to be a dude, and the care given to the character's arc is far more important than the attention paid to their gender. And naturally, men and women can be informed, inspired, and warned by characters of either sex. But we need both. The reason for why we need characters who share our gender varies from person to person, naturally. But I think the predominant reason for men is that we need heroes of great strength and power to show us how to use our masculine traits in the way that they should be used. That is, in service of others. Examples of men rejecting the pursuit of wealth, power, and status in favor of doing what is right are so incredibly necessary in a world that teaches that wealth and influence are the achievements most worth seeking. Does the MCU or Star Wars need to be the predominant force in teaching these virtues? No, of course not. No one expects franchises like The Fast and the Furious to inspire us or teach us in any meaningful way, so why do I have these expectations for these other franchises? Well, because they have shown us that in the past, they are capable of presenting to us these inspiring, virtuous heroes. From Han Solo to Tony Stark to King Theoden, these massive IPs have given us heroes who demonstrate how to conquer small-mindedness and selfishness in the pursuit of heroic virtues. When that aspect of these stories is stripped away, everyone loses. And at the risk of beating a dead horse, of course, men can learn from and be inspired by heroic women, such as Mulan, this Mulan, Ahsoka Tano, and Eowyn, to name but a few. But of course, this may not be entirely true for everyone, and I do believe that we are going to be moved more by stories to which we can closely relate. The story of Kratos and Atreus simply would not have hit me the same way before I became a dad, or before I started shaving my head. Naturally, this doesn't mean that I think Hollywood should cater exclusively to men, even in male-dominated genres, but rather that they should take care in creating male and female heroes who embody the virtues of bravery, hopefulness, and selfless love. If every hero in the MCU had been written with the same care as Tony Stark in Iron Man 1, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be making this video no matter how many female heroes there were. As one commenter pointed out, movies that do feature a titular male hero are still flopping, because even they aren't being written with the requisite level of attention. Really, that's what it all boils down to. The crappiness of so many movies and shows in these genres lately is not due to the gender of the protagonist, but the rushed nature of production in search of a quick buck, lack of respect for the source material, and far too much time and energy spent on equity instead of good storytelling. Look, if you just focus on telling a good story, diversity will naturally follow, because you will find good stories to tell in every corner of the earth. Audiences, by and large, don't really care what boxes a character may or may not check. They just care that the creators don't put checking those boxes above meaningful storytelling on the priority list. We all need heroes we can relate to in one way or another. And modern Hollywood is certainly aware of that fact, hence the additional push for diversity in recent years. That would be great if only the quality of the stories could stay high. And men have dominated the film industry for pretty much its entire existence, so the influx of leading ladies in recent years is hardly a surprise. Here's the thing, though. You can have both. Bringing in a new group does not mean the old group needs to be discarded. The attitude should not be, ah, men had their day, now it's women's turn. The age of men.
is over. But rather, we should recognize that both sexes need stories to which they can relate, tales that inspire them in unique ways. Getting into conversations about ratios or gender equity in leading roles is just useless. Because there are no right answers. Because those are the wrong questions. At the end of the day, we just need good stories. We need storytellers to care about the craft for its own sake, for the innate beauty of the art. That's easy to say, but far harder to actually accomplish. Art is supposed to be work. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be created by those who have a special talent and dedication for it. And most of all, it's supposed to inspire in us the desire to grow and change. To be better than we are today by giving us heroes who show us the way. I really, I, I promise I did not intend for that to rhyme when I wrote it. I am seriously like the furthest thing from a poet you could imagine. Anyhow, that about wraps it up. Thank you for everyone who commented on the previous video and expressed their disagreement or hesitation with the opinions that I expressed in that rant. You made me think more deeply about this rather touchy issue, and for that I am grateful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Also, let me know what you think of the new format. I assume if you're watching still at this point that you actually enjoyed the video, or maybe you really hated it and just wanted to express your rage at every point, I don't know. Or maybe you were just letting YouTube autoplay while you played video games and then the algorithm subjected you to my face and voice and sorry about that. But anyways, I'm experimenting trying to keep the videos more engaging while also getting more comfortable talking to a camera. So let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Such as the urge to seek comfort by eating a tub of ice cream while binging the six hour documentary. It's not a documentary, Sam. <laughs> I think 1% of women in the audience would go, oh, I wish it was a documentary. <laughs> <laughs>